The world is ever changing, and air guns haven't been immune. I know the old ways of thinking die hard, and that there's no school like the old school. Right? I'm not one to convince you otherwise, but today, I will succeed in furrowing your brow. Our story begins here. The Pulsar's action is electronic and microprocessor control. It's also waterproof and requires six AA batteries, or in a pinch, can use a single nine volt. The technology is not new. Daystate's been developing it for a decade now and the Pulsar represents five generations of fine tuning and refinement. The latest gun control unit, or GCU, does a lot for you. The battery powered wizardry oversees Daystate's MAP Compensated Technology, or MCT. This electronic regulator succeeds in pushing performance to remarkable levels. Allow me to explain. Power output and shot count are controllable by selecting one of three levels high, medium, or low. If you're like me, you're probably asking the question, why in the heck would I ever use low power? Well, other than the obvious, 190 shots per fill, the Pulsar manages to average 26 foot-pounds of energy across the charge. To put that in perspective, that's 45% more power than a .177 caliber pellet traveling at 1,000 feet per second. Then the next question becomes, the velocities like these have practical applications out to typical shooting distances? And the answer is yes. When sighted in at 50 yards on high power, drop was only two and a half dots on 10X with a 25 grain pellet, and penetration managed 10.25 inches, and I mixed my gel pretty heavy. Having established that the Pulsar is pretty much a 26 foot pound 200 shot gun, let's crank things up to mid power and see what happens. With increased velocity comes increased air consumption and shots per fill are reduced to 121. Still plenty for a full day's work in the field. What's more, power is now pushed above 30 foot pounds, which results in a flatter trajectory and extreme spreads and standard deviations tightening up too. Out at 50 yards, things got a little more meaningful. Penetration came up by an inch and a quarter and wound up at 11 and a half inches total. For a little more push and 20% more energy, move the power selector to high. This effectively moves the Pulsar 25 to a 70 shot per fill 37 foot pound platform. This is the ideal setting if you want to take larger game or reach out to 100 yards and beyond. Back out at 50 yards, the little extra snort can be heard, seen and felt. With a 25 grain JSB or air arms, penetration measured a lethal 12 inches. The wound channel was pretty nasty too. But power doesn't mean much if you can't hit what you're shooting at. Before getting busy at 50, I put 29 different types of pellet through the Pulsar, the best of which you'll see represented here. As most do, the Lothar Walthar barrel in the Pulsar took a liking to the JSB brand of pellets and shot all three well at 50 yards. One of the advantages to the 25 cal over the .177 and .22 is that they're not as susceptible to the effects of the wind. Today they're steady at 8 and gusting to 14, and they're blowing from my 5 o'clock to my 11.
As with all air guns, you've got to experiment with different types of ammo to see what the barrel's going to prefer. While you are, be prepared to cope with varying points of impact. It's all part of the game. You won't be doing it often, but the Pulsar's 300 cubic centimeter aluminum tank is refillable to 230 bar. A male foster fitting quick disconnect with standard equipment, it was good to see. The onboard digital pressure gauge was accurate and entertaining to watch. It even gave you a low pressure heads up as things dropped below 160 bar. The display is bright and easy to read even in intense sunlight and times out after about a minute to conserve battery power. When it does time out, a flick of the safety or an opening and closing of the cocking lever quickly reactivates it. Inherent to its compact bullpup design, the Pulsar is gonna do better in the brush or as a hunting and pesting air gun. Measuring just 30 inches in overall length, the Pulsar weighs 10.2 pounds with a scope and 11.2 pounds with a scope and Atlas bipod. Predator International's Polymag and h and Sports Barracuda Hunter Extreme are two hunting pellets that the Pulsar like. Predator's Polymag wouldn't fit in the Pulsar's magazine, but h and Sports Barracuda Hunter Extreme would. To keep the playing field level between the two, I just used the included single shot tray that'll ship with your Pulsar. Smack in the 50 yard gel with high power, our hunting pellets did their job admirably. Stopping in just 5.25 inches and creating an explosive wound channel, the polymag delivered all of its energy to the target within just a few inches of impact. Upon penetration, its ballistic tip immediately rolled away and the pellet itself expanded to a nasty 8.63 millimeters. Our Barracuda Hunter Extreme might be the better choice for larger game or tougher hides where deeper penetration is required. While pellet expansion was just 3 tenths of a millimeter, the Barracuda Hunter Extreme did manage to penetrate 9.25 inches and likely due to its Phillips head tip, created a pretty gnarly wound channel as well. Power Accuracy and controllability don't mean much without comfort and convenience. I've handled a lot of rifles over the years, and even among my favorites, begrudgingly the Pulsar is the most comfortable by far. What I initially misjudged as being a cheap plasticky grip turned out to be an aftermarket Mako synthetic AK-47 pistol grip. It's ergonomic and super comfortable and should have no problem taking any abuse this class of rifle could dish out to it. Part of your hookup to the Pulsar is that five-way adjustable trigger. The first stage is adjustable for weight and travel, and the second stage for weight only. Couple that with a blade that can be adjusted for height and cant, and you've got a trigger that can be massaged into, dare I say, perfect performance. I was able to move pull weight down to as little as 5 ounces, but settled on a pound and a half for general use.
The polymer comb is comfortable to cheek and slides forward and backward to accommodate your facial structure. And like the trigger, the Pulsar's butt plate is adjustable for height and can't. Supporting the accessorization of flashlights and bipods, the polymer forend has a weaver rail molded right into it. No need to ever clamp on a laser though. The Pulsar's got one built into the subframe that's easily adjustable with the forend in place. Atop the Pulsar sat an 11 mm rail to add the scope of your choosing. Our test gun arrived with an optional MTC Viper Connect scope. This was my first experience with an MTC, and I'm happy to report that it was all good. Quality and optics were as good as anything I've ever had my hands on, and at just over an 11 inches long, made a great companion for the Pulsar. Making the scope optically superior to conventional designs is the same thing that made it challenging to shoot on a bench, an ultra short eye relief. If you're going to use your Pulsar and MTC Connect for field work, you're going to enjoy the massively wider field of view, better depth of field, and better balance and user connection to the rifle. But for bench work and for the making of this video, I opted for a scope with a more traditional eye relief. And finally, it all comes apart for ease of maintenance and upkeep. Another technical tidbit you might be excited to know about is when I was cleaning the Pulsar's barrel, I discovered that the shroud is baffled. This makes for a PCP that when fired on high power, registers just above ambient background noise when tested for loudness. And if you want to really get crazy, the shroud comes equipped with one half inch UNF threads so you can add an aftermarket moderator. But more on that later. The Pulsar comes with a good owner's manual and detailed instructions on how to program it. But here's the basic rundown. If the Pulsar is off, i.e. standby mode as you see here, flick the safety off and on or open and close the cocking lever to activate the display and wake it up. Entering program mode is easy. With the safety on and the cocking lever open, hold down the trigger for five or more seconds until the display flashes programming mode. Once it does, release the trigger and squeeze it again to ask the Pulsar to scroll you through the basic programming options. Now, each squeeze of the trigger will toggle you through the subcategories of that selection. In this case, I'm choosing medium power. To confirm your selection and lock it in, simply close the cocking arm and the Pulsar will respond with a little haptic feedback and a little snort from the barrel. The magazine on off feature simply activates or deactivates a magazine counter that's readable from the display. When the magazine runs out of ammo, the Pulsar will tell you, and a simple opening and closing of the cocking arm resets the counter. The laser on selection asks the Pulsar to activate the laser when turning off the safety. After a few minutes without use, it too will time out, or to shut it off, simply reactivate the safety. And without further ado, here are your 100 yard groups. Worth noting, when cocking the Pulsar, you're not actually compressing a hammer spring, so that cocking lever flicks around pretty easily. Moving it rearward is just tripping a sensor, so all the force is felt when you push it back forward to chamber that pellet. The trigger works on the same principle, and really it was quite mind-blowing to see how well Daystate did in getting it to feel like a regular trigger. Also worth noting, 
Reassigning power levels to the pulsar requires no retuning of the regulator. After you get familiar with the point of impact changes across the three power levels, compensating with the mill dots and the scope really becomes quite easy and second nature. What that means to you is the only thing you'll want to keep in your pocket is a field notebook. No tools required. It was three full days testing and shooting video with a pulsar. And now it was time to cut loose and have a little fun. My buddy Chris took over the shooting while I operated the camera gear and did my best not to burst into laughter with each colorful explosion. Putting the laser to good use, we painted some 30 yard targets. And to our surprise, the red dot shined bright even under bluebird skies. Enjoy. Initially, it was challenging to get the camera to lock focus on that little egg in front of the wooded backdrop. But eventually, we figured it out. So you remember the part where I said more on an aftermarket moderator later? <clears throat> Please take note, if you're the egg, you heard nothing until it was all over. Yeah, you can see the red on it like nobody's business. That was awesome, dude. Please don't be on the lens. Sweet. Oh, amazing. It didn't get any. That crop oh, went man, it made everywhere, mess. too. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> the and then the teeth. It was a good time getting in front of you again, guys. If you liked what you saw here, and you want to encourage us to make more videos like it, please be sure to give us a thumbs up at the end of the video and to subscribe. By doing so, you'll keep the vendors supplying the channel with a steady stream of products for us to review and for you to enjoy. And of course, I measure my self-worth by seeing how many of you I can get to watch. Air Guns of Arizona supplied our Pulsar and our MTC scope. I'll put links in the description so you know where you can pick them up or find more information. See you at the next one.